Hey guys, going on? Megan here. So I've been getting a lot of questions about the three African UFC champions. Why are all three of them from pretty much the same region in Africa? Is it a coincidence? Is it genetics? Is it luck? And keep in mind, in my video last year, I told you guys that the best genetics in West Africa come from this region, right? And I told you guys specifically Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, and also Congo. By the way, sure enough, this is also where Mike Tyson's ancestors are from. And look, this is exactly where the three UFC champions are from. Nigeria and Cameroon. See, I told you guys, this region, keep in mind guys, I'm West African, so I grew up there. This region produces the craziest genetics you've ever seen. And to put in perspective the odds of having all those champions come from those places, guys, look. This is a graph of all the men in the world of fighting age. As you can see, the majority of them are in Asia, followed by the rest of Africa, Europe, South America, USA. And look how small, look where Cameroon is. And look where Nigeria is. So as you can clearly see, this is not by luck. This is not by coincidence. The odds are extremely, extremely low that you will have three UFC champions from those regions. But anyway, guys, this is another episode of Fun Fact Friday. It's probably going to be up tomorrow because I'm not editing that shit tonight. But long story short, it's the series where we go over all the genetics of all the different races and ethnicities in the world. And the different sports or professions that dominate in. So if you haven't watched the previous episodes, make sure you catch up. We cover Europeans, East Africans, West Africans, Asians, Central Europeans, Latinos, almost everyone. Now remember the disclaimer, no racism is allowed on this channel. We go over every ethnicity and every race, regardless of the pros and cons. Everyone has advantages and disadvantages, right? No one race is superior in all things. That's not how natural selection works, all right? So we're all different and we're all good at different things. So I don't want to see no one in the comment section preaching supremacist bullshit. I don't care if you're a white supremacist or a black supremacist. Get the fuck off my channel. We should be able to have these conversations without turning the comment section into a race war. As I explained before, the reason why we have genetic differences is because we adapted to different biomes on the world as we migrated out of Africa. And we've also interbred with different archaic species, you know, the Nisovans, Neanderthals, and even other unknown species in Africa, right? So that's why we have so many, uh, that's why even though we're so similar, we also have so many genetic differences and what I like to call superpowers. Now, of course, there are differences in outliers, right? For example, there are very fast white men. Ya Ming is Asian, but he's taller than Shaq. And obviously, Mark Henry was a very good strong man, even though the sport is dominated by Europeans. So there are obviously outliers, but we're not talking about outliers here. We're talking about on average. And last thing, stop mentioning culture, guys. Stop saying it's all about culture. It's all about culture. Fuck no, right? The average pygmy is less than five feet tall. You mean to tell me they're not in the NBA because of culture, because they don't like the NBA? No, motherfucker, they're not tall enough to play the NBA. So you have to factor in genetic limitations. All right, so let's quickly go over West African dominance. All right, so let's look at the stats. Let's quickly look over the dominance of West African descendants in fast twitch dominant sports, in this case, sprinting. Again, vast majority of West African descendants. This is the top 10 fastest times at the Olympics. And as you can see, all of them are West African descendants. Even the record for five-year-olds, West African descendant. The record for women, the fastest women ever. The majority, including number one, West African descendant. Young girls under the age of 18, the majority, West African descendants. Girls as young as five, the record holder, West African descendant. Even in the NFL, the fastest position, as you can see, cornerback, safety, and wide receiver, as you can see, dominated by West African descendants. The 40-yard dash record at the NFL combine, West African descendants. The vertical jump records, West African descendants. The broad jump record, West African descendants. So as you can clearly see, something is going on here, right? You have to be a complete retard to think that genetics don't play a role. And sure enough, if you look at the genome of West Africans and their descendants, there are a ton of genetic adaptations and mutations that have the highest frequency in West Africa. For example, the most myostatin mutations are in Sub-Saharan Africa. Androgen receptor sensitivity. As you guys know, black people have the highest sensitivity to androgens. That's why they also have the highest cases of prostate cancer. 
right? So it's a double-edged sword. That's also why they blow the fuck up on steroids. The average person can take steroids and you barely notice the difference, whereas the average black person takes steroids and they look like the Hulk in like six months. It's because their androgen receptors are very, very sensitive. The actin in 3 gene, which is, again, the protein found mostly in fast twitch muscles, allows you to produce force, allows you to recover faster from muscle damage. In short, it makes you explosive as fuck. And as you can see, West Africans are at the very top when it comes to actin in 3 favorable genotypes followed by jamaicans which are again descendants of west africans african americans which are also descendants of west africans and then you can see the rest of the world and the list continues igf1 mutations lowest amounts of vitamin d binding protein which is obviously a good thing longest arm to height ratio which is obviously great for mma it keeps your opponent at bay due to the longer reach fast twitch muscle fibers west africans have more than any other race glycolytic and anaerobic enzymes the ACE gene, especially the DD polymorphism, they're second only to ARABs. So that gives them an advantage in anything that requires raising your blood pressure as fast as possible, such as combat sports. The CK gene for creatine kinase, and obviously lowest hemoglobin concentrations and highest rates of sickle cell, which as we all know, makes you fast twitch dominant. And there are a bunch of other genes that I can go over in future videos that West Africans have the highest frequencies of. And if you notice, the vast majority of them are all related to fast twitch muscle fibers, power output. Not strength, power output. Remember, strength and power are two completely different things. Power has the element of speed, strength doesn't. Now why? Why do they have so many genes that make them fast twitch dominant? It's mainly because of malaria, guys. I mentioned that in a longer video. Look at the death rate for malaria in the whole world. Look where they're concentrated. 94% of malaria deaths every single year come from this region that is insane guys and what offers the best protection against malaria lower hemoglobin and sickle cell all of which make you fast twitch dominant it's by pure accident guys if you fast twitch dominant you are extremely resistant to malaria whereas if you slow twitch dominant you are fucked because remember the malaria parasite needs your hemoglobin to multiply that's why the regions in the world that have the most malaria deaths also produce the most fast twitch dominant people it's all because of this fuck ass mosquito and sure enough look here in 2019 six countries accounted for half of all malaria deaths and look who's at number one nigeria coincidence see i told you guys it's all about natural selection and here's where it gets crazy notice how all the malaria deaths are here and how sickle cell and being fast twitch dominant protection from malaria check out the regions in the entire world with the most sickle cell trait and sickle cell anemia see the map is literally identical to this one and it's not just correlation there's causation when you have sickle cell or low hemoglobin or fast twitch dominant you have from 50 to 70 percent resistance to malaria an example is my sister she's fast twitch dominant she's anemic whereas i'm not and when we grew up i had malaria almost every other month meanwhile she was just chilling and to this day, she puts on muscle on her legs so fucking fast. Even when she sprints without any training, she's fast as shit. And of course, African Americans are descendants of West Africans. So look, sickle cell disease in the United States. Look how much higher it is for blacks compared to every other race. Because again, they're descendants of West Africans. That came over from the Atlantic slave trade, right? So it has nothing to do with selective breeding from slavery. People love that theory that's been debunked so many times that, oh, you know, the slave owner's bred the, the strongest slave, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. When the Human Genome Project came out, we found out that theory was full of shit, guys. Because when we looked at the genes of West Africans who didn't go through the slave trade and didn't go through selective breeding, and we compared them to African Americans, we found out that West Africans still have more fast twitch dominant genes than African Americans. And white supremacists hated that discovery because now they could no longer take credit for the athleticism of African Americans. You know, this whole time they thought, oh yeah, it's because of us. It's because we bred them to be strong. Meanwhile, we found out it was actually the complete opposite. Those who never left Africa are actually more fast twitch dominant than those who went through selective breeding. Why? Again, because they still had to deal with this fuck ass mosquito. They still had to deal with malaria. Whereas the ones that left because of slavery, not as much. And the proof is here. All three of those guys are pure West Africans who are not descendants of the slave trade. 
Now, of course, there's a small cultural element. Again, we all know the story of Francis. He grew up working in sand mines. And obviously, we know that the poorest regions in the world tend to produce some of the best fighters because they have no other alternatives. You know, that to them, this is everything. So culture plays a role. Socioeconomic status plays a role. Poverty plays a role, but not as much as genetics. And we also can't forget the fact that other ethnicities and other races are also dominating their own niche. So you have whites who are overrepresented in strongman competitions, weightlifting, and football. You have Hispanics in the lower weight classes of boxing, Polynesians in rugby, East Africans in long distance running, right? So every other ethnicity and race are also making full use of their adaptations of their quote unquote genetic superpowers, right? So it's not surprising that we're seeing West Africans slowly creep in into fast switch dominant sports, right? It's all about combining genetics with obviously hard work and proper training. But keep in mind, genetics are king. Genetics are everything. You can work as hard as you want. If you don't have the genetics for a sport, your chances of becoming dominant are very, very slim, right? So stop thinking it's just culture or hard work, right? Everyone at the top level works hard. Everyone at the top level takes PEDs. So when all those things are equalized, genetics are what decide who has the advantage. Same reason why strongman competitions are dominated by Europeans. It's not just culture. It's not just that they're more into it. They are genetically tall and big as fuck. All right? So stop using that argument of black men are in the NFL. That's why they're not in strongman competitions. Guys, less than a thousand black men are in the NFL. All right? And there are millions, millions of black men out there. Right? So stop acting like every black man just automatically qualifies for the NFL. What happened to the ones that didn't make the cut? If it was that easy, they'll just enter strongman competition and just win left and right, right? But obviously, that's not the case. You got to factor in genetics. You got to factor in the height, the bone structure, the center of gravity, the limbs, all those things that gives Europeans an edge in certain sports and blacks, Asians, and other ethnicities an advantage in others, all right? You can't have one group dominating every single thing. It just doesn't work like that. But anyway, I hope this video answers the questions as to why such a small region of Africa is producing so many champions. And trust me, there are way more down there, way more guys over there with insane genetics. It's just they haven't been found yet. They don't have the resources and the money uh, to compete. So best believe as time progresses, more and more genetic phenoms are going to come out of that region. Mark my word. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.